All right, if you all are ready, let's go ahead and get started. There's only a 30 minute session, so I wanna make sure we have time for discussion. Um, I'm Beth Playley. I am uh, with the Research Data Alliance in the US, and I'm just going to give you a super brief update on how we are reviving the US, the RDA US for uh, greater impact of the RDA within US. So I'm gonna go through a few slides just for those people that may not be familiar with RDA, talk to a couple of the, the, the uh, significant outputs of RDA, and then just launch into the programmatic activities that we're, that we're working on in the US. So RDA, for those of you who don't know, it's got about 10,000 members, 10,000 plus members from 145 countries, considers itself a neutral space, international neutral space, where members come together to develop and adopt infrastructure, that's human and uh, technical infrastructure that promotes data sharing and data-driven research. Um, you know, the why, 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 what's the, the value proposition of RDA for libraries? to interact with data professionals, researchers, uh, technology professionals, academics, uh, partner with experts, develop strategic collaborative relationships, engage in an advocacy institution-wide, and I would say uh, broader um, advocacy process, um, you know, in an international forum, and uh, of course anybody can do this, but, but adopting the recommendations to support the strategic aims um, of the libraries. So there's, you, there's a greater experience and expertise. There's a, 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 um, a the RDA uh, plenaries tend to have a, a range of, of, of engagement from researchers to technical people to um, you know, people running repositories to librarians. It's, it's quite a, a, a wonderfully uh, diverse uh, set of people who are focused on, on basically on data management and, and open science. Um, you know, enhancing the quality, improving and access to that. Um, and I will, so how can you engage? You can engage either individually or you can engage as, a, as an organizational member. Um, so with respect to the, I was just pulling out a couple of the recommendations that, that, are, uh, that are relatively recent that I think are, are, are germane just to give you a sense for what the, the products of the Research Data Alliance are. The Research Data Alliance um, is not a standards body, so it's not producing standards, it's producing what it is calling recommendations. However, it is working on funding now to facilitate pathways to actual standards, adopted standards. We'll know more about that um, in a little bit. I think that's a very favorable development for, uh, for the organization. RDA has been around for a decade now. Um, and these recommendations, the recommendation process is valuable, but, but again, but that next step to actually having a bona fide standard, I think, is, 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 is a welcome addition. So a couple of the big ones here, the RDA Data Management Plan Common Standard for uh, Machine Actual Data Management Plans, and uh, recently, the Fair Principles for Research Software are a couple of the products that, um, are, that have come out in the form of these final recommendations. And if one looks at what, uh, what the impact is, and, and this is um, obviously something that, that RDA US is trying to do is, is, is establish that impact um, um, uh, in more definitively, so this is, this is somewhat cursory, so um, and I guess take it with, that, with a grain of salt. But um, so EOSC, the uh, Nordic version, which would be in, I think it's in probably in Finland, um, you know, adopted the, the uh, machine actionability of data management plans. And basically then uh, it tells a story about that adoption process. And they say, well, the lessons we've picked up from the adoption process is there's a real value in adopting as early as possible in the application profile helps to identify missing features and so on. And then also very recently, uh, there was a, a set of funders that formed the uh, Global Biodata Coalition uh, in the United States. There's members from NIH for sure, for sure NSF. There may be foundation members that are represented in the United States as well. Uh, put out this a couple papers, one of them on open data strategies, a couple of these consultation papers, they're currently open for comment right now. Um, and one is on open data strategies and the other one is on sustainability. And in the, 
the paper on open data strategies, they, 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 they mentioned the research data lines. Actually, they mentioned the research data lines a couple different times, and I know some of those conversations have taken place um, in the funders forum at the Research Data Alliance. Here and here too, they talk about the data management plans as being a valuable tool in implementing funder policies, pointing out that their full potential has yet to be realized for either funders or researchers. It's recognized that ideally research groups would use DMPs as living documents, which they develop as their research progresses. I actually endorse that one wholly. Through the Research Data Alliance, there have been discussions over the potential benefits that could be gained for both funders and researchers from making DMPs machine readable and encouraging their publication. So in looking at, um, you know, looking at this, again, this is very, very recent because it's open for comments right now. Um, you know, this is something that motivates RDA, re-enlivening re RDA US as, a, as an entity that can um, realize some of the benefits of these conversations and some of the developments in the U.S. And, and this is certainly an area where I would like to see RDA's impact in the U.S. be, uh, be, be greater. So, uh, so I'm gonna go into um, RDA U.S. So uh, for those of you that don't know me, I've, you know, I've been around for, for quite some time. Um, you know, I spent a few years, I'm, I'm at Indiana University, I'm, I'm a faculty member there and, and have a hat in, in an IT organization there as well. Um, I was one of the founders of the RDA, there was a, a group of about a dozen of us, two of, two of us from the United States and, and from different, different countries that, that kind of laid the groundwork for, for the organization. Um, it's been a decade now. Um, you know, in the meantime, I, I went to the National Science Foundation where I spent three years working on open science. Um, you know, and, and had to step away from RDA uh, significantly during that time because I was so heavily conflicted with it. Um, you know, that was, that's now been um, a couple years ago, and, and as I looked at where the RDA US was 10 years on, it, it looked like it was faltering, and, and, um, and it was. I mean, the person that was, that was putting a lot of attention into it has, had indicated she was, it was Rebecca Koskella that she was going to be uh, stepping down, and, 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 and it felt like um, that, that there's still, there's still much that's undone and, and an international venue for where these conversations can happen and where these, these consensus agreements can happen, particularly if they can push into standards, is, is extremely powerful. So I stepped in, I've got some resources I was able to put into to re-enlivening RDA US. So that's why um, you know, I, I wanted to kind of get this in front of you and, and just explain what we're trying to do with RDA US and offer it as um, an opportunity. It's, it's, a, it's a small one, but an opportunity to this community to, to envision impact in the United States through RDA US, and, and, and we encourage that and welcome that. So we are, you know, one thing I did do when I took it over, I said, we are focusing on U.S. outcomes. We are not focused on, you know, the, the Americas. We are focused on U.S. outcomes. This is the year of open science. This is the time to do it. We need to do it. So uh, we are, with RDA, advancing research and education across our region and globally. That, that's what RDA and RDA U.S. do. Uh, we are bringing, uh, a, we are bringing, the U.S. a global perspective on the benefits and challenges of open science. We are focusing on the U.S. and problems in the U.S. So how can this international body be used to, to further uh, where, where we are in open science and the open science scholarship in the U.S.? And then also how can we land our voice more fully into um, international affairs, and I, I would also say how can RDA be more of a voice in the national conversation around open science and scholarship than it is right now, and, and that, that's what we're trying to accomplish. So we've, we've set up a, um, a, uh, a, an organization, uh, we've got program officers, it's an office that's you know, kind of the, 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 the workers in this, we've got a set of task force leads and, and we basically identified several people. We identified several areas in cyber infrastructure, open science and software, and these are areas where we think RDA um, can have more, in the United States, can have more impact than it does, and we, we, tasked, uh, uh, we tasked significant uh, senior people in each of these areas to help us 
with the, the kind of the penetration into these communities with respect to further developing uh, the RDA US and the RDA impact in those communities. Um, the task force, leader, task force leaders are part of the, uh, the steering committee um, and, and but the steering committee is, is slightly larger. It's a small steering committee in addition to that. I see Saeed here. Saeed is, thankfully, thank you, Saeed, representing on the software task force. Uh, we've got a set of programs I'll talk a little bit about. Again, we just launched in October, so we are, we are brand new. I'll, I will talk to you about the Tigers program. We also, which is a facilitation program, we also are working on training and early career experiences um, a curated solutions bank, which fortunately is leveraging some funding that Europe had, uh, where they're, they're moving quickly on, on helping to kind of index and organize the outputs of RDA, which are desperately, desperately needed. And then we've got a loyal community strengthening that community and, and making sure we don't lose it. So the program office task force leads and steering committee are, are all mentioned here, um, um, I'm sure Many of you know Zach, um, Stephen Diggs probably, Aaron Ellis, um, Indiana, um, ch -ch 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 Natalie you probably know, a number of people you probably know, uh, Cynthia, Michael. So the Tigers program, um, it, is, it, is, it is basically, it's modeled off of a <laughs> tiger program. <laughs> We did give permission to be the Tigris program. <laughs> it's modeled off a program uh, that Europe is doing, uh, which is basically facilitating. You know, it's and we were talking at breakfast this morning. I was at the Educause table and a research data management table, and we were talking about you know when you've got volunteer activity and you're asked to you're asked to do something and you've got all the commitment and passion to do it, but but yet you're a volunteer. So and that that there's a lot of work there in keeping the meetings going and getting the getting the proposal you know, the proposal here, in this case, it's a proposal for a working group in, getting the, the, the products uh, written, and you know, so that kind of stuff is something that the, the RDA US office can help with. So we facilitate these, the, uh, the outputs, or the, the recommendations, the outcomes um, from working groups, and I'll show you a little diagram on, on, on how, on what the different steps along the way are. But we are focused on, on, on either uh, working groups that are that have as their objective um, impacts that that could benefit in the U.S. You know we can pick those up midstream, and we're looking we're you know we're looking at a couple of those now, and then we can also facilitate new working groups. So we can help you know gathering the community around, um, and then like I say facilitating it through its process, its 12 to 18 month process, and then we can help amplify uh, the outputs of the um, of the working group. So taking off taking away some of that 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 the burden of that. Um, the kind of the logistical work. So what does that look like? You start over there on the left-hand side, there's a, there's, a, there's a need, kind of an open science scholarship need, that's that number one bullet. Um, you engage with RDA US through the Tigris program. Uh, it helps shape the local need, it helps develop the critical mass it draws on, so it engages the expertise of the RDA US community. We're establishing relationships with partner organizations, so it will involve the representation of partner organizations, and, and together we can help you shape what that, uh, that proposal for that working group would look like, and, then, and, and who might be involved in that. And, and then it works through RDA Global. So, so what, what we found in, in, at least over time, over the last decade is, is RDA is, 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 is very heavily dominated by, uh, by European participation. The European funding agencies have engaged uh, fully in relying on RDA for, for certain outputs. So if we're going to get the outputs that we need, basically what we need to do is front load the working groups with people so that we have the people there so that we can help shape the outcome as we need it. Otherwise, it might get heavily dominated um, by other interests. So we want to just kind of make sure that we're, we're skewing things to, to the outcome that we want, and, and, and we can help do that by drawing on the, on the U.S. community. And part of, part of what we're also doing with, in, in talking with funders is to, to take that step beyond so that when that community does get engaged, we can actually help send them to the, uh, to the, the annual plenary. One is virtual, and 
there's two a year, one's virtual and one is in person. So recognizing that we can reduce the burden further there, we're working on that. So, so this, this working group then works through the RDA Global and, and here is where, um, you know, one of the unique advantages of the RDA is it is a global entity and it does have global representation and that, that, that's completely evident in these plenaries. That international perspective is its superpower. So that encouraging that, that perspective is what gives the outcomes their strength. So the international perspectives are, are expected, so that, that would be part of the working group, part of the discussions. And then, and then in that, that over that period, the 12 to 18 month period, that gets facilitated through the TIGRIS program. And then after that, now you've got, there's now a result that is targeted toward the U.S. It's been facilitated so it finishes on time and, and the, the result is as strong as possible and it's been informed globally. And that, I think, is, is, is the optimal um, uh, contribution at this point that we can make to, to making RDA U.S. relevant. So, so I would say, again, I'm just, just you know, the, the, the space across which the organization is, is envisioning its contributions are through this TIGRIS program, through this curated solution bank, through the training and early career program, and then through strengthening the RDA US community. And, and, and that, is, that is our objective. And my objective is to get this, this thing on stable, uh, stable footing over the next couple years and then turn it over to, uh, to, to um, enthusiastic next generation people to lead. So I'm Beth Playley again. Uh, please reach out to me. Uh, we absolutely welcome your um, your engagement with us. We are, we are here to serve. So thank you. So questions? I was just in Taiwan. I would have had to have spoken a whole lot slower. So I hope I didn't talk too fast. I was trying to run through this. <laughs> All right. Please. Hey, Beth. Um, David Elbert from Johns Hopkins. <clears throat> really excited to see RDA uh, U.S. kind of engaging and doing a lot of yeah. stuff. As you know, I participate internationally, and I think the way you articulated that superpower of getting that international collaboration is, is really brilliant. Um, I'm wondering how uh, you envision engaging, uh, I don't know if I should use the term communities of practice, because RDA has something they call communities of practice, which is sort of formally defined. But as you know, I work in the materials domain with what we've created, a, a materials Research Data Alliance, and there are others, and sort of how you're going to balance those two things without ending up competing, for want of a better term. So, yeah, so don't leave, because I... <laughs> <laughs> Nowhere to go. Yeah, I welcome, yeah, I, no, I, 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 you know, I welcome thoughts. I mean, it's clear that, that um, you know, we're stronger together. I mean, and yeah. clearly that, yes. So I would, I would turn this back to you. I've had some conversations, oh, say, with, with Meredith Goins of, of, of the World Data Service on, on what, a, a, what partnerships could look like. You know, in, in terms of sharing credit, absolutely. You know, are there, I can certainly, you know, so, so what I'm trying to do, um, and, and I was just talking with Cynthia Vitell about, about responding to um, you know, requests for information and whatnot as, mm -hmm. as, as an organization so we have a single voice. So one of the obvious points of intersection is, you know, do we come together as a, as a shared voice in, in, in making statements nat nationally and, and those have uh, the power of cumulative kind of, of, of organizations making that voice. So I think there, there's, there's certainly power there. You know, I, I, would, I would ask you, I mean, what other forms of, of cooperative activity would, would be enhancing, would be enhancing uh, with RDA US as, as one of the, as, as a partner? If I can put you on the spot there. I mean, <clears throat> excuse me, I think there are plenty. I think that RDA in general has, um, you just see really different membership, right? Just like coming to CNI for me is very different than going to a materials research society type mm -hmm. of meeting, right? And so I think that, um, we're never going to get all the material scientists to participate in something like RDA or RDA US. And so we've got our own organization to try to get deeper penetration there. We get membership there, but I think having people that bridge between those organizations remains really important. And so some of us 
uh, in the materials world, certainly participate in RDA internationally, and those of us in the U.S. now will be excited to participate in RDA U.S., and I'm less concerned about formally what that looks like, because I think that as soon as we start talking, we'll start developing outcomes that are, um, you know, headed towards the same goals, if not directly aligned in what we do. So I think it's really who we see in the room, and I imagine RDA US, just like internationally, will have more um, librarians and infrastructure service people, and you know, people with different kinds of approaches um, who need to talk with the domain people as well, so we can bridge that. And, and yeah, and, and what that raises, and I appreciate that, what that raises is, is what are the venues for those, you know, being in the same room, uh, w where those happen. And, uh, you know, we're conscious of the fact that, you know, RDA is the, is the parent organization, so it's got its events. And, and so, you know, are those events the, the, the right events to, to do something local or, you know, is, is doing something separate from that? Right. Um, a better way to to strengthen those ties. Yeah, you know, and, and and it may be because the RDA does one virtual and one in person that you're only getting a, a 12 month every you know every 12 month experience to 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 put something together in person. Yep. That may drive the decision. But but thank you. No, yep. that, that's yeah. That, I think that's important. I'm sure we'll talk about def it yeah. Lots definitely more. Def <laughs> definitely definitely stronger together. Clearly yep. stronger together. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit more about the training and early career programs and who the intended audience. Is it for information professionals or is it for a diverse group? Are you trying to recruit from, um, you know, across different uh, industry and sectors? Yeah, and, and thank you for that. And, and, and I should say, you know, kind of, um, kind of our order of, of chugging through things was to get, get things kicked off and get the Tigers program set up. So we put less thought into, so we're kind of moving left to right <laughs> in terms of how we're, how we're thinking about things. But just, just early thoughts there is um, RDA is, is, um, is, is unique in the, the assets that it has um, that it has produced, and and I recognize for those of you that know RDA, you know there's there's, you know there's a <laughs> there's a lot of um, there's a, there's a lot of stuff there. <laughs> so 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 calling calling what's critical, I think, is important, and then putting that together. So I think there there is a unique set of of assets there, and I also think there's a super unique opportunity to engage with the RDA community that. Um, one can do that RDA US can do that that others don't have the advantage of. So can't take advantage of. So um, so I think you know the, the again the thinking is really early here, but but you know early career experiences coupled with training that draws on what RDA has done. And obviously that isn't complete, but that's you know so that that that's as, that's as far as we've gotten. So does that flow into you know, existing uh, existing programs. You know, does it that and that we haven't. We have. We would welcome conversation. Let me put it this way: we would welcome conversations on what that might look like. So we're just, you know, and I guess I'm driven partly by our university, which I'm sure some of you are doing this are, are hearing the same thing. But you know, student experiential learning is really important. So, you know, when you've got something like this that could feed into ex unique experiences. How do you take advantage of that? And I think, our, and you know, because we've got this platform, the RDA platform, we can take advantage of that. Again, early, early thinking. We welcome conversations. Hi, uh, Todd Carpenter, uh, oh, National good. Information Todd, Studies. Good. I want to talk to you. Hi, how you doing? <laughs> Um, long time. On my list. <laughs> long, long time uh, participant and engager in our RDA, and um, it's such a great organization, and I'm so pleased with this sort of reformulation of RDA US. Could you talk a little bit about the sustainability plans for RDA US? I mean, that's kind of one of the reasons that it fell down. Is right. how does it sustain itself? How does it? Where is its resources coming from? Um, it had been supported through a variety of grants over the years, which isn't a, a really good sustainable model. I'm wondering what sort of thinking is going on in terms of 
sustained yeah, funding. No, and, and, and Todd, thank you. And I, yes, and, and Todd is with uh, Force 11, is a kind of a sister, important sister organization. So um, uh, the um, so one of the the, the one of the thinking one of the thoughts in in organizing um, RDA US the way it's been organized is to give it a programmatic basis. Um, prior funding was. Uh, really oriented, of which I was involved in. I was I was involved in the early the early grant, the first five year grant. Um, but they were oriented around, you know, we're already a U.S. We need funding, and um, and that worked a couple times, and <laughs> but it stopped working. <laughs> and it does. Um, so so orienting around programmatic activity that can be funded individually is is how we're tackling the sustainability. Um, that's. That plus there, you know, there's there's a certain amount of funding that I've committed to um, kind of as you know, kind of grounding funding to get us through the next couple of years as we build a, a stronger programmatic base. But it is very much oriented around um, scalable and fundable programmatic activity and adaptability when. Um, when new programs are needed, and, and I think that's, um, you know, and I, I guess, I guess, um, you know, I, I believe in talking to some, you know, talking to funders is, is, you know, you know, help us, help us set, help us set, help us solve our problems, you know. And then again, I was at NSF, I, I was at one a, a federal agency. I get this, you know, help us solve our problems. So if you can be adaptive in solving a problem that a funder is facing, you, you're there. You know, and I th so I just think it's we're taking a completely different approach with respect to um, what we're what we're what we're providing here. So, um, yeah. So we've got we've got funding to to we've got funding to get this ramp the, the starting ramp, um, and we've got well defined programs that are certainly working in Europe. I think there's um, I think there's there's reason to believe given where the landscape is, particularly with respect to training and uh, around consensus and whatnot, I think I think we're I think we're well positioned. Do we have any other any other remarks to make? Saeed, do you want can I put you on the spot to say something? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to start calling people. Sure. Uh, so I, I'll try to actually incorporate some of the earlier comments. So my, my impression, and Beth, you should tell me this is not correct, is RDA Global doesn't have a massive sort of budget and baseline of funding. It is largely volunteer driven, right? It is basically individuals stepping up and saying we're going to work in these working groups and interest groups and so on. So to David's really good point, um, I'm, I'm putting on my hat uh, for the software task force. The Cyber Resilience Act in the, EU, in the EU has profound implications in terms of how open source software collaboration happens, right? And there has not been a lot of discussion around what that means for US research universities working with their counterparts in the EU. We also have in the US, and again, I'm director of the OSPO at CMU, so full disclosure, but a net growing network of open source programs offices in US universities, which is somewhat unique. There are pockets of this in the rest of the world, but I think the US is really kind of getting out front. So how does that network of OSPOs interface with the communities of practice? David mentioned with RDA US and then RDA through something like the Cyber Resilience Act. This has profound implications for all of us, right? And I think that this sort of interplay of these different organizations is exactly the right mix to see this together. So in addition to my role with, with RDA US, I'm motivated to solve this problem, period, right? It'll be very important for Carnegie Mellon, any university. So getting that energy behind RDA US, I think, is going to be a key part uh, of the sustainability. And, and just to plus one, but what Beth said, we're very eager to hear about what would be useful for training in early career programs. Again, building on things that already exist, but if there are gaps, either by type of community or type of content, we'd love to hear more about it. Great. Thank you, Saeed. Good. Well, I guess I think we're kind of running out of time here, but go ahead. A quick one. Sorry, I didn't want to turn this into a panel discussion. All of a sudden, we're all on the panel. Uh, but but I, th I, I, I like what Saeed said, and, and I think that, um, you know, there's like, a, I don't want to make it a pyramid scheme, right? But RDA classically has outcomes that are, uh, to people in the domains, feel like really high-level sort of policy-ish kind of things that people don't know how to really implement. 
And so organizing those types of things in the domains, we need to learn from those things, not recreate everything, although people have to come to things in their own time. Sometimes you have to let them recreate a few mm -hmm. things. Um, but then figure out how to pick and choose. But it's very rare that, in my experience, that in the domains people know what RDA is doing, know what Force 11 is doing, know what OSPOs are doing. We have new funding for an open science project at, at Hopkins, and uh, you know we had to go introduce ourselves to the folks in the OSPO office. That's kind of the way it works. So I think connecting those dots will always be a super critical um, thing to do. Great. So. All right. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, this has been a fabulous discussion. Thank you so much for, for being here. And, and please, again, I'm just my last name, Playley at iu.edu. Please, please do reach out. I'd love to talk more. Thank you.